real OKC? Well, I think the real OKC is a combination of, of both to some degree. First of all, they'll never be as bad offensively as they were with Kevin Durant in game two. I told you all it was an aberration. This guy is a superstar. This guy is a scorer uh, extraordinaire. This guy is a guy that career averages of 27, 7, and 6 on 48% shooting from the field and 38% shooting from three-point range. And by the way, he's a career 88% shooter from the free throw line, uh, just to piggyback off of our points from the other day. You knew that game three, uh, Kevin Durant was going to show out because game two is an aberration. When he struggles to score like that, that is not something that's going to happen in back-to-back -back nights against uh, with somebody as great as Kevin Durant is as a scorer. But the fluidity with, of their offense how sometimes every shot they take appears to be so difficult. I'm going to sit here and say to you that what you saw last night is not indicative of what you will see from them all the time. Every game they'll do that, but it won't happen for four quarters. You'll see it for a quarter or a half, but you won't see it over the course of 48 minutes because they just go the difficult route. When all else fails, they trust nobody but Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. Serge Ibaka had a decent game last night. Deion Waiters hit four three-pointers. Uh, Enos Cantor had 21 points off the bench. They shot 15 of 27 from three-point range. Even Serge Ibaka hit both of his three-point shots. So when they're shooting the basketball like that, they're pretty close to unstoppable. We understand that. But no matter what the circumstances are, I think what you saw last night from Kevin Durant, you can rely upon on most nights. But I see what you saw from, I think what you saw from their offense, it's ebb, it ebbs and flows. They're somewhere in the middle. Hmm. You won't remember this, but I predicted that Durant and Westbrook last night would combine to score 70 points. Yes, you did. And I was a little high. They combined to score 60 and as much credit as I gave to Charlie V, right? Charlie Villanueva, mm -hmm. Miss yes. UConn, Miss yep. Connecticut's buddy from mm -hmm. right yep. UConn yep. days. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I blame him for his video blog that he posted that really seemed to infuriate and motivate the Mavericks last night because both Durant and Westbrook came out on classic missions and one Durant After dancing, Skip. After dancing, don't they forget that. They did it. Yeah, you mean the pregame. They went in and did yes. their routine. Yep, they did yes. it. And big bad Charlie V, he walked down there, but, you know, they, they, it was t they did it down by their own bench, so he couldn't really do anything about it. And all that happened last night was that Durant scored 20 in the first half, and then Westbrook scored 20 in the second half. You know what? That's just too good because... I watched this game from start to finish, and I thought Dallas actually played pretty well last night. And in surges and spurts, they made little runs at Oklahoma City, and especially in the third quarter, they made a big run. And I got to give Russell Westbrook credit, man. He just flat out said, no, not in your house. It wasn't in his house. It was in your house. Not in your house are you going to do this to us. And he hit two big momentum-busting threes. I thought he was special in the second half. Russell Westbrook just playing as, as an offensive force, he was special. Well, you know and I know, on any given night, if those two can get in that kind of a groove, they're, they're just pretty much, they're unbeatable. When they make 15 of 27 threes, that's Golden State-esque for these guys because they don't always or often do that. And it was just too good. Dallas couldn't control the tempo. They couldn't control the momentum. And once the dam broke, they, they just drowned under the, the tempo that Oklahoma City can create when you let them run wild on you. And this was a run wild game. And I'm going to say again, to piggyback your point, Enos Kanter, I keep saying this all year, if, if you go on player efficiency rating, which is a very telling stat, thanks to John Hollinger, top 10 Enos Kanter is 10th in the league. So that means Oklahoma City has three of the top 10 players in PER, obviously Durant and Westbrook, but 10th. And then last night, he, he, as you say, he comes off the bench and plays, what, 20, let's call it 22 minutes, and he goes for 21 and 8. Wow. I mean, that's just too good. So you've got, now it's a three-headed monster, including the guy coming off the bench. Well, if they can do that every night, I, I give them a real shot to beat Golden State. The, the point is, 
they can be wildly inconsistent. They, they get their pride challenged and they bounce back and throw haymakers on the basketball court. And then they'll, they'll put it on cruise control and maybe they'll, they'll blow a game. So I, I don't know. The, the real Mavericks, to me, are the ones who have trouble holding those fourth quarter leads from night to night to night. That's you talk about the real, real you talk about the real thunder, I mean, not I'm the real sorry, not yes. the real. I'm sorry, right. the real thunder. Yes, the real thunder, ha they, they struggle in close late games to close deals. That's the team I've seen all year, and that's the team that I'm looking forward to my Spurs playing next round. Well, I got to tell you, I, I, listen, I think from a talent perspective, everybody knows that the Oklahoma City Thunder are, are the best match to go up against the Golden State Warriors in terms of talent. Yep, I not agree. Not coaching, nope, not schemes, you not it. style of play, sure. but in terms of talent. I'm with you. And I just think that when you look at it from that perspective, uh, listen, I can't sleep on Oklahoma City and what they can bring to the table. I know they're a threat, but I lost you. I'm sorry. You lost. We're, we're right here. Can you hear me? You Hello? got us. All right. Anyway, game four, Dallas is Saturday night at 8 Eastern on ESPN. You can also watch it on the ESPN app if you are out and about. Coming up next, LeBron and the Cavs look to take a three games to none lead over the Pistons tonight. We'll tell you if they'll do that after the break. You know this team very well. What? Yes, fly, Eagles, fly. What should the Eagles do with Bradford? Right now, they should keep him. And I think you keep him all the way until you draft a quarterback. And then uh, there will probably, there might be some teams that call you when, if you take a quarterback, which they're going to do. Uh, but I think if you're the Eagles, um, regardless if you take a guy or not, you can go wait and take this guy and go into to training camp and go, hey, you're going to compete for the position. You're going to draft a rookie quarterback. If the rookie quarterback obviously catches your eye and says this guy's ready to play, uh, then you start calling some teams and ask people, are you interested in uh, Sam Bradford? But right now, he's a part of your football team, and I think you go about doing your work that way. And Sam Bradford, you know, he came out saying he wants to be traded. It's kind of funny because he's in a no-win situation as a quarterback because he sits there, and if he doesn't say anything, people will say, well, 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 he, he's not mad they drafted a quarterback. Yeah. You know, now when he says something, everybody says, well, what are you mad about? You signed a two-year contract, right? So he's sitting in one of those positions where it's a no-win situation for Sam Bradford. He's got to be professional about it. He signed the deal. He didn't have to sign it. He could have got out of there. You know, he didn't have to sign the contract. He got out. But he, he decided to. Now, obviously, things, things have changed uh, since, since the last time he signed his contract. But right now, I think going forward, they're looking for a future. And it didn't seem it doesn't seem to be Sam Bradford, that's for sure. Stephen A. Well, I think that coach is right. I just think he's not complete with his thought. Uh, when coach says you would keep him, he's absolutely right. But I would add, you tell him to shut the hell up and go out there and do the job. <laughs> Let's say that. Uh, you, you're Sam Bradford. You ain't John Brady. You ain't Peyton Manning. You ain't Drew Brees. You ain't Aaron Rodgers. You're none of these people, okay? There's been a couple of seasons where you've been injured. Your durability is questionable, which means your availability is questionable. And even when you were there, although you would have passed for 4,000 yards had you played all 16 games as opposed to just 14 games where you threw for 3,700-plus yards, you had, what was it, uh, 14 touchdowns, 19 touchdowns, 14, 14 interceptions? interceptions yes. uh, the, the reality is clear. Sam Bradford has a lot to prove. There's a lot of people that didn't even want Sam Bradford back. So the fact that here you are because the Eagles drafted a quarterback, you feeling a bit melancholy if not ticked off or whatever the case may be, what the hell did you think they needed to provide you with? Security? What is this? Are you retiring? Do you want social security? Because that's the only kind of security I think you deserve. <laughs> Outside of that, you got to go out there and prove it. What amazes me is that you got a whole bunch of guys, I don't want to say a whole bunch, but a few guys, they get their money before they prove themselves. They've had an opportunity to prove themselves, came up short on that regard, but then want you to invest in them further so you can guarantee them the opportunity to prove themselves again when they've already had ample opportunity to prove themselves, but they didn't. And all I'm saying is Sam Bradford, not only did he sign a contract, 
He didn't play last year for free. You know, when he missed nine games due to his injury, he was still getting paid. When he missed six games in 2011 due to injury, he still got paid. So now somebody has the temerity, the unmitigated goal to sit there and tell you that you need to step up and earn your job unless if you want to if you want that kind of security and he's whining about how he wants to get traded. Be quiet. Kick rocks. Shut up and go out there and play and prove that you are worthy of the investment that you want them to make in you. Very simple. Hmm. I think it's even simpler. Oh, boy. What you going to do? Cut him? I'm going to trade Sam Bradford. I'm going to put him on the block right now. I'm going to hope that John Elway would be intrigued enough to give me something for Sam Bradford, to whom I have just bet $22 guaranteed million on. It's a big contract to swallow, but maybe John Elway is getting desperate enough that he would jump at it. Maybe. I, I don't know that, but I'm just saying maybe somebody would want Sam Bradford because here's my point. They just bet a king's ransom to go up to number two. We presume to take a kid from North Dakota State that they aren't just sold on. They believe he's going to be a big star. You can't bet that kind of future on somebody unless you are convinced he's going to be a big long-term star in this league. Just the way the Rams appear to be convinced that Jared Goff is going to be a big long-term star in the city of Los Angeles. So what happened the last time we saw this with Luck and RG3? Did they not play right out of the box? Yeah. And they both played pretty well. Robert played great once he got a hold of it. Obviously got hurt at the end of that year, but he was the offensive rookie of the year. They, he took that team to the division title. So I'm saying, why, if he's that great, if you, you bet that kind of package on him, uh, don't you feel some pressure to play him? Aren't you trying to turn around the Eagles quickly? Are you going to put him on ice for two or three years the way they did Aaron Rodgers behind Brett Favre? You don't have Brett Favre. No, you, you got I, Sam Bradford, well, right? Uh, yeah, you have Sam Bradford, a new regime. Um, you, you've just you, you've changed your whole way of playing football now on both sides of the ball. Okay, but don't you you know those Philly fans? Oh, you yeah. don't think they're going to be they'll, they'll, screaming for Wentz sure. to play? Sure, they'll they'll want him to play just yeah. like they did down in um, uh, Jacksonville mm -hmm. with Bortles. And okay. I said you should play Bortles. I said play yeah. the guy. Why do you just play? Okay, the Eagles are All maybe right. in a little bit different. Right now, a little, little, maybe they feel like we're closer than okay. maybe Bortles was. Okay, in, in but, that but maybe because they're closer, they could surround him with better they talent could. than Bortles they got and, surrounded and, with. But I don't think you trade him now. I think if you want to trade him, you wait till the draft's over with. Because there's going to well, be. Well, I mean, some, you can wait till after the yeah, draft. Yeah, there's going to be some sure teams. There's going to be some get. teams that want a quarterback can't get one. Then he's more valuable. To okay, you. sure. So okay, you no, I, I got it. Saying, you were saying hold on to camp. Well, and I'm you, saying soon. I, I would. What I'm saying is, yeah. yeah, because you never know what's going to happen with this young kid. I mean, you can't. You can say, "Well, put all you, on you him." You better know. But what right? if he got no, hurt no. or something happened in camp? No, no. Just, you got to. You just got to. Just you got to forbid. Remember, you, know, you, like you, you, you have. He, he's part of your organization. Okay. You can do what you want with him, but let's put this other guy. Let's get him out on the field. Let's watch him play, because the one thing you cannot do, and you can't deny the players is that when you go to work every day and they watch guys practice, every player listens to his eyes. Mm -hmm. He watches other guys play. And if Wentz or whoever the rookie quarterback is lighting it up, yeah. you can't walk back in that locker room as a head coach and say, you know what, we're going to start Bradford because we paid him $2 million. The player's going to say, coach, that guy's a better player. You need to play this guy. Okay. okay. So, so what if you're coaching these Eagles and you go to camp with all three quarterbacks because you signed well, Chase Daniels to back up, yes, right? And you gave yes. him some money. Yep. Okay. So John Gruden made the great point. You got three quarterbacks. You don't have enough a lot reps. Of money. Okay, what are you going to do? Well, you know? first of all, the only one that knows the offense is Daniels. So you yeah. have to worry about him. He's not going to get as many reps. He's not going to be a starter. He is the backup guy. Okay. You know that. Yep. You're just trying to determine now, is it going to be the rookie that you draft, or is it going to be Sam Bradford? And it's probably on at the reps, end of the day. you mean. On reps. Yeah. That's who's going to get the reps. That's who's going to get the reps, okay? Okay. Chase Daniels has the reps. All right. He's got them for because two, three years in Kansas City. Kansas yeah. City. He right. knows the offense. Okay. He's there to be the backup quarterback. Okay. Who's but, the star? But, but all I ever hear is that, that Doug Peterson and Frank Reich right. yeah. and John DeFilippo yes. are quarterback makers. And yes. I, I think there's a little bit of a runaway theme going on here. I think they're getting a little too much credit. Yeah. But whatever, if they're that good... Yeah. If, if they can immediately transform this kid from North Dakota State into yes. a pro quarterback, you should go for it, man. Oh, Let's see it. That, that, that will be their intentions. Yeah. 
All they right. want to get him caught up as fast yeah. as they can yeah. in professional football. Okay. And if that is the fact, after the second preseason game, if you're looking at this kid and say, you know what, we got to get more reps, he's got to play, then you're on the phone and you're trying to deal All Sam right. Bradford. Okay. By that, it, it may be too late at that point no, for John Elway. I don't know that. Yeah? Don't know that. We'll see. Don't know that. It's interesting how it all plays out. When we come back, Kevin Durant bounces back in a big way, but who are the real Thunder? That Ooh. is the question. What happened to those Thunder? Who are they, Herm? They won them Thunder. They blew them boys out, huh? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You worried about the thing, them Thunder, huh? Them other guys get a hold of San Antonio Spurs, huh? Why like you mess around with Kevin Durant? Bring it on. Bring it on. I'm ready. Oh, yeah, okay. We gonna yeah. see. Gonna get interesting. <laughs> mm-hmm.